Alright, hey everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome back to Sable. I'm gonna be kinda quiet. It's late, and I don't know how this ser series is gonna go. I wanna do more of it. I don't know how much, I, I said this last time, I don't know how much I wanna actually do of it, but I wanna do more of this game. I think partly as a footage gathering thing. That inherently, no matter what, this is going to be something, this is going to be a game we refer to, uh, sometimes maybe for better or worse. Noticing is a little choppy. It might just be loading. Uh, I know V-Sync was messing this up. Or was there was there no V-Sync? I have no idea. It definitely doesn't feel as good as it did last time, which is unfortunate. Uh, let's just drop the level of detail back down to default and see if that... Oh, yeah, that, that fixes it up. All right, there we go. So what the heck am I going to do? Eh, no, it's still a little choppy. That's unfortunate. Unfortunately, I think this is one of those classic games that's just a little bit more than the devs could chew. And they did a damn fine job regardless, but there's just a, a couple little spots here and there where it's just like, that could be better. You guys don't have to deal with it or see it, but I've got... Eh, it, there's screen tear. It's not horrendous, but it's a thing. But no, I, I think I just want to refer to this game a lot uh, for various purposes, mainly open world games. Most open world games follow the Ubisoft formula. And, you know, to some degree, I think this does borrow a lot from Ubisoft and from Breath of the Wild. I was reading the re reviews for it and it very much had that that feeling of, you know, every everybody being like, well, it's got a little bit of Breath of the Wild and maybe Horizon Zero Dawn and, and the Gungeon. I'm making shit up at this point. I actually have not seen a damn interview for this, but I know or interview. I haven't seen a damn review for this and I don't care to. I'm not interested in it, frankly. Um, gosh. There's like two people that'll watch reviews for and none of them are for games that I'm playing. Otherwise, I just kind of pay attention. Uh, you know, I'll check the Steam page or something, see if there's like a bunch of negative reviews and try to figure out why. And sometimes it's like the protagonist is stupid and then I read more about it and it's like, oh no, it's just a bunch of angry people. It's like, okay, never mind. But sometimes they have a point, like, this game doesn't run, or, boy, there's some racist garbage out after, like, X amount of hours, and, you know, I love those reviews because it saves me a lot of time. There's nothing better for me than to find that a developer is a garbage can dumpster fire man. I don't know why I'm gonna go to this topic necessarily, but... It, like, you'd think, for most people, it's just like, oh no, you know, it turns out that, you know, this developer is, is a bad person, like... E, there we go. You know, the, the developer is scum, I can't support them anymore. It's a shame, I was still looking forward to that game, and I'm sitting here being like, gosh, there's so many games. Now I get to, like, permanently say no to this one, and never have to think about them ever again. Like, I don't know, that's always kind of just been on my mind when it comes to games uh, is that like the more the more developers I can blacklist the less work I have to do and that bit's kind of nice sure I miss out on a couple but it's rare let's take a look at some of these things we got is this please tell me this is a cartographer I hope it is oh boy my fingers hurt I've been playing a couple of controller games and uh, apparently my, the, my fingers haven't responded that well to it I don't actually know if this is a town or just kind of like a little caravan group. Oh shit, you know what other game I need, you really need to put some time into is Stonefly. This year has been absolutely filthy with uh, crazy good releases, which is good and also kind of bad for me because I haven't been able to finish most of them and it's a bit of an issue. And I still got to go back to Garden Story, I got to finish, well I want to play Stonefly, I got to finish Lost and Random. And it's one of those where... I'm tired, I'm really tired. That I think uh, a year in lockdown has not been necessarily great for me. Yeah, true, over a year. I'm like, I've been managing. I try and get outside more, I try and do things, but it's not that easy. Do I have any mail? Hello, Sable. No unread messages. Gosh, I can cannot imagine a life like that. I think I had 10,000 unread emails a couple years ago and Shell's been chipping away at them. I can feel the nervous energy behind this mask. Oh, I can feel the nervous energy behind the mask. Glider, could you help me? I tell him my name's Sable and ask what he needs. It's my friend Micah. He's 
He's so obsessed with treasure hunting or finding silly old artifacts. Every week he goes out after something new. Ask if he's ever found something. Nothing you wouldn't get from your average scrapper. And he'll go bloody anywhere in caves, cliffs, wherever. With no care for danger, I keep telling him, Micah, be safe. But he doesn't care. He thinks he's invincible. And now he, he's gone out to who knows where and whoops. You can still hover, yes? You won't be in danger of falling down anywhere. Is he somewhere dangerous? Ask if Bashir is expecting Micah to be in danger. If Micah's... It's Micah. Or if it's Micah, probably. He places... The, uh, he, the places he sneaks off to are usually runes. The older the better. Half crumbling and covered in dust. Tends to be places where you can take one false step and really get hurt. Micah says that's where the best treasure's at. Please, Glider, if you see him, tell him Bashir's looking for him. Tell Bashir I'll keep an eye out for his friend. And wish him well as I depart. Glider, I wish I was still on my gliding. Being a grown-up is terrible. Oh, I can trade with this guy. Alright, here's my stuff. So we can buy... I don't... I have... No, I have enough for both. Sure. I'll buy both. Thanks for checking out the goods. See ya. What else we got? Tell me about the camp. We're just nomads passing through. The Five Bells is... For those of us trying to avoid the hustle and bustle of... Ekri over there. Just too many people. Too much going on. Prefer to keep company with the crickets. See ya. Fair enough. Anything interesting here? No. Bucket. 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 Alright. I have sufficiently bucketed. I don't think there's anything else here except for that quest. Oh, my bike. Oh, my bike. It's a thing. I'll take it. There we go. But yeah, I've just been very tired. Ooh. Hello, there's a whole town over there, or a rune. I don't actually know if there's people inside. It doesn't seem particularly active, but I won't know until I get closer. But yeah, just too much going on. Not enough anything. Just kind of exhausted. Oh, is this a... Uh, this might be a place where I can up my bike. Okay, we've definitely found Acria. That's somebody else's bike. Well, I see somebody here. I don't like the tonality that covered this. Hello. Hamza is the machinist in Akria. He's busy tidying up the workshop. It looks like someone's ransacked the place. What can I do do for you, Glider? What happened here? Hamza explains that this happened a few nights ago. He has no idea who did it. Could this be related to the power going out? He seems more resigned than concerned about having his workshop ransacked. And indicates that he doesn't know who, who or why someone would do such a thing. I'm not sure I'm convinced by his ignorance, but I let it go. Okay, I can customize the bike. Okay, so here's the thing. Boat. Oh. Well, here's the problem. I cannot tell you what any of this looks like. Well. Okay. Let's take a look. Oh, it's a little boat, boat bike. I love it. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell in here. Customized colors, like, what color? Everything is brown. Nope, I shouldn't be doing this. Alright, so there's something going on in here. I'll just wander around until I find somebody that actually has a quest for me. Gosh, the amount of detail and everything. Like, obviously, a lot of it is low poly, but it looks so good. I, I think I mentioned that I've been practicing my own 3D skills. I'd love to start making, not games, I want to make mecha. I want to just do like a bunch of mechs, just robots, and then buy a 3D printer and print them. I don't want to sell them. Then I want to attach a trading card game to it. Normally make the best glass this side of the C-split. Well, normally I do at least. The power cuts has my workshop completely out of commission. I need my furnace to work. Not like casting little pots in the sand. I got a terrible backlog of orders already. Bike parts, ships, parts, or pots, architecture, you name it. Okay, so this is, well. Is this water? Holy shit, there's water. I was not expecting there to be sufficient water in a way that I could actually, like, climb into and swim in it. But here we are. But like looking at this game, except for the shader, almost all of these environments and pieces, I feel like I could almost do already. 
Which is kind of neat, actually. This is Rita, the owner of the Overhang Cafe. Goodbye. Farewell, Glider. Well, fair enough. There's so much. There's people and things. And, like, it really does feel like I'm on another planet, experiencing another culture. So many video games often show you kind of glimpses of another culture, but it's not very detailed. It's just a little bit in the background. This one has a lot. I like it. It might be too much. I like it when the power's off. There's a sense of peacefulness to it. Yeah, but who and where is the person that I can talk to about turning the power back on? Because I'm pretty sure I'm the one that fixes the problems here. Okay, I think I might have found it. The guard towers over me. I can't tell if I've somehow committed some kind of transgression as he looks me over. He seems to be contemplating a decision of sort, and mutters something unintelligible under his breath. Hello? He seems to refocus as I speak, as if remembering that I'm a living being. You'll do. I have something in mind for you. Let's make good use of you. Me? I ask him how. Well, you're a glider, by your very nature an outsider. You belong to nothing and no one. Therefore, you're capable of uncommon objectivity. I wonder if I should share my myriad of popular, unpopular, or deeply subjective opinions, but decide to spare him. He seems to have much more to say. My name is Sandip. I'm in the middle of a very serious investigation. There are few I can trust. You may have noticed that we find ourselves without power, yes? I did notice that. It's no accident. Someone stole the power core from out of the atomic heart, and the per uh, perpetrator eludes me still. I thought perhaps you might be able to help me solve this crime and bring the thief to justice. I'll help. I've already begun to picture myself darting in and out of the shadows, tracking the elusive power thief throughout the city. In my mind, I'm swiftness and smoke, a creature of cunning and dexterity. Then Santa pans me a rusted heap. This is an old power core. Scrap, really. But if you bring this to the engineer for me, he can fix it, and we can get this town going again. But while you're there, I want you to ask if he has any idea who might want to steal something like this and why. I ask myself, but... People are less forthcoming with guards? You get it. I see I've made the right choice. Report back when you've taken care of this, yes? I'll be waiting. I say goodbye to Sandip. Neat. Okay. I guess I'm just gonna kinda go out. I don't know where I'm going. Hello? Oh, no. I see. We came, we came the wrong direction in. Kind of, sort of. Oh yeah, this is even the the entrance bridge. I just I parked in the garage like a weirdo. Actually, don't remember where my bike is. I keep expecting it to be to just show up. Uh-oh. Oh, no, it's coming. I just have to wait for it to come. Heartbreak in the city. Discover a new power core. Got it. There's probably more to this area. Oh, it's so cute watching it come in. Oh. We might want to go switch up the colors. Because it, it seems to have only switched the colors of the front. It looks like there's a number of kind of sick-looking bike bits there. But we'll have to check it later. I'm poor as dirt anyway. So there's not really a whole lot for me to do, on, unfortunately. Alright, here we go. Let's just go back. I don't like these filters that change the color too much. They make things a lot harder to parse. I, I need color to see what's going on. Oh, I have a delivery for you. I got you running errands, eh? I like to, uh, I like to, people love to give me errands. Uh, yeah, that'll happen to gliders. I suppose folks see them as having that sort of directionless liberty that means you aren't interrupting anything if you ask them to fetch something for you. I'll drop this thing off with Sandip when it's good and ready. Anything else I can help you with? Uh, questions about the power cut. What do you want to ask? Any idea why someone might have taken the core? 
Crosses his arms and looks down, thinking on it. Power is the lifeblood of everything we do. As machinists and our work exists to uplift the past and secure the future. Power supports the machines, and machines are bound to the people. I nod, listening. If you want to take power from the people, then you wish to make the people powerless. He looks sad at this, so I think you'll be looking for someone who cares a little for the common person. Okay. Where are you when the power went out? I was in the workshop, sleeping. Get most of my sleep here, lately if I'm being honest. He shrugs. That being the case though, I didn't notice anything was wrong. Ask why not? Because I'm a machinist is why. And not one of us, no matter how different we may seem, would ever be caught dead without a backup generator. So I had a few good hours of rest before I caught Wise. I nod, accepting his answer. Who do you think did it? If I had to say? He touches a hand to his chin. Iria, the merchant. I tell him I'm listening and he shuffles his feet, getting closer to me. His voice lowers to a low rumble. Iria and her ilk run the town. The merchants are the locus of control. And they've got their claws in the food stocks. Imagine, if you will, what happens when the power goes down. All of a sudden, folks are stockpiling food, and Eerie and Erlot are hiking up the prices. There's not a damn thing any of the rest of us can do. You should look into Eerie. You'll find her weaving her web of corruption from above the beetle market across the bridge. You'll have to persuade her guard to let you pass, though. Okay. I, I kind of like this. Okay, customized bike. There we go. Uh, let's see. So I could go dark. Let's go colorful. Let's be Sherbert. There we go. I don't actually think this is going to be much of a detective e thing. Oh gosh, that reminds me. There's a couple of games. There's a lot of games I need to play, unfortunately. There's, oh gosh, what is it called? I think it's called Paradise Killer. I've never played it. I have it. And I'd really like to actually put some time into it if I can give, uh, if I can find the time. Hopefully, as things calm down, I'll get the chance. Oh, there's so many sick-looking bikes around. I can't wait to get more parts. I know there's some like really sci-fi-looking ones. Let me guess. The guard. I hear the guard murmuring about the pom about pomegranates to himself as I approach. When he notices me, he clams up and stands to attention. Can I help you? You said something about pomegranates? The guard seems to perk up at the mention of the word. Yeah, have you tried one? They sell them in Sarai, outside of town. They're unbelievable, magical. Each seed is a burst of watery coolness. He continues to espouse his clear obsession with the fruit, and I notice my own mouth salivating a little. Need to speak to Iria. Iria's an important person. If I'm gonna let a bothersome glider interrupt her day, it better be worth my while. I don't have that much. Okay, let's go see if I can find a pomegranate. Or sneak in. I am 99.9% .9 certain I'm not going to be able to immediately sneak in. Uh, let me check. Where the hell am I? Am I here? No, that's the whale. I'm here. In Ecria. I think we might want to fly around for a little bit and find a map. In Sarai. There's a couple more locations. So this map looked really big when I first started this. I think it's still pretty big, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Uh, like, I, I legitimately thought this was going to be a tremendously huge and long game. And I can safely say, now that I've looked at it a little bit more, it's kind of empty. But I think what is in it is kind of meaningful. Oh, yeah, I like those Sherbert colors. They've got a like, good vibe to them. Let's just wander around a little bit until I find Sarai. I mean, what I really want to do is find the map, ma map maker, the cartographer balloon. But I might as well explore other locations as well. Just to get him on the map. I think I can fast travel too. At least I hope I can. Is that a dead critter? Or just uh, some rocks? Small bones maybe? Hard to tell. Okay, so what is this thing? I don't know, but it looks cool. Looks like I'm not going to be able to take my bike up it, but that's fine. Thieving Magpie Well. Well, that's a name. Okay. That's closed and locked, but I don't actually know if I can do anything with it. 
shit. All right. Well, when in Rome. I mean, it looks like there's a series of ladders to get back. Uh, kind of a series of ladders to get back. I climb this? Nope. Can't climb the central rope. Well, let's look around and just see what we got. Because we always... Every location is worth exploring. Admittedly, it's a lot of just chum eggs and money. But you know what? I'll take both. But yeah, to go back to the topic I was kind of bringing up before we found out about power mystery. Uh, just being tired. I mean, I just got a lot of work to do. Question mark. When you work for yourself, you're never done working. There's always something new. Especially when it's like a fully creative endeavor. What the hell? Interesting. Oh, that was weird. Jump for it. Okay, I'm gonna have to get around to it. I don't know what a weird glittery butterfly is, but I I can't just not. Can't just not get it. Looks like there might be a couple of them. I'll see if I can climb down over there and see see what's what. Bip. There we go. But yeah, when you're when you're self-employed, you never you never get a day off. Even your day offs are always working. Not necessarily in, like, the worst way, but sometimes it's just kind of like, okay, today I'm going to finish all these unfinished tasks. Tomorrow... I legitimately do not know how to grab them. Oh. I just need to stand there. Alright, let's go get the other one. I have no idea if it's actually at all relevant to me. Or my interests, or any of my, my activities. But I'm gonna grab it all the same. Now, can I? I looks like I can walk along this instead, which might be a little safer. There we go. But yeah, so I've been spending pretty much every free day working on, like I said, 3D modeling and a bunch of other things. It's nice. I enjoy it quite a lot. But I think there's this kind of feeling of just like, I never rest. Uh, unfortunately, because I've started actually spending time with my hobbies. Uh, I think it started to have a bit of a deleterious effect on the rest of my work ethic. Uh, if only because I, I pretty much had turned my hobby into a job. Uh, which is, um... Not necessarily recommended. How the hell? Am I supposed to get this butterfly? Okay, I'm gonna wait. I think I might want to just... Wait for my juice to come back. I think I might just have to drop on the thing. That's, uh, kind of annoying. I have no idea what I need these for. Yeah, it looks like I have to be looking at it to actually get it to work here. It's a little frustrating because it's not easy to look at. Maybe I could climb back up and like drop down and just hope for the best. I don't know. I, I don't want to give up. Because there are, like, a number of them. There's a lot of them, in fact. Okay, I give up. I'm just going to grab the ones I can. I think many of them might not actually be catchable, per se. Looks like I can get a lot of them, too. A lot of dragonflies, a lot of 
Okay, maybe I should go talk to this person first and see what they have to say. Please help! My oh, it's Micah. Micah's voice is ragged and he has the look of someone who's spent slightly too long down a well. A little sandy and tattered. I'm here to rescue you. Tell Micah that I'm here to s save him and my name is Sable. Sable, thank you. Thanks so much. How did, I, how did you know I was here? I'm for Micah that Bashir sent me. Oh no. Is that bad? I was so stupid with him. Just arrogant, rude. He's always telling me to be more careful, not going off hunting alone. I'm always so silly with him. So pointless. I always feel like I have to prove something. Like, the more he tells me to be careful, the less I want to. But it's for no reason. I'm just being difficult for the sake of it. Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Or I do that sometimes, too. I reassure Micah that I've often felt a little pressured to prove something, even when the pressure was coming from me. I know, but you're you're a glider. You're young. You should. I should know better. I tell Micah we can't dwell on this right now and ask if he can walk. No, not enough to make my way out of here, at least. That's why I dragged myself over here, thinking I might use the crane, but I can't access the controls. I wonder aloud if I could access the controls, and Micah digs around in his pockets until he finds what he's looking for. A key. He holds it up. Found this key. Should let you in. From there, you can use the crane. I nod. Sorry I can't help more. I feel so useless. Thank you, Sable. You're really kind. Tell him no matter what, uh, that it's no matter and that he isn't useless. Then I take the key and go. Bug. I don't know what these are for, but I want all of them. Give me bug. Give me bug. Bug. Thank you. There we go. What else we got around here? Grand total of some things. More bug. For sure, more mo bug. More bug? More bug. More bug. Okay. I think I have eliminated much of the bug menace from this area. Now let's actually work on the painstaking effort of climb ah, climbing out of here without sneezing. I probably should sneeze, but then I have to cycle the recording, and that's annoying. My nose has just been really eh, today. Was that eat, Shell? Ah, heat. Yeah, I mean, it could be it. I am actually overheating pretty bad. We also, yeah, do have the heater on, but I am overheating pretty bad. Shell, can you turn the heat down a bit? Unfortunately, Shell is an absolute uh, popsicle. And she needs her environment to be practically a desert. She needs to be... She needs... For her to feel warm, I must have sweat pouring down my face. If you've ever seen the, um... Oh, shoot. Is it Keenan and Kel? I forget... I forget which comedian it is, but there's... There's specifically... A gif that people often use for sweating and it is yeah it is is him with just sweat pouring down his face and always always feels like that for me when I'm in this room probably also dehydrated a little bit I've been drinking tea which is good bad unfortunately I made the tea hot which is bad I don't think I'm gonna get all those butterflies I think they'd be really difficult to grab. But honestly, if they're floating there, then I probably am not supposed to grab them to begin with. This one, though. This one I can grab. Ooh. There we go. At some point, we will find somebody that wants these, and then I'm going to be like, I have got you covered. The sound effects are not happy with this game. I... Okay. So, I was going to mention this earlier, uh, along the whole, like, being tired and some other things, is that I'm... The episodes on this might end up being a little short, maybe, uh, mostly to preserve my sanity. Uh, the other thing is very specifically that, uh, what was I going to say? I mean, they might be a little sporadic. I'm really hoping that they patch this game uh, a fair bit, because there's just a couple of weird issues, you know, the audio glitches and whatnot. Uh, little things that really could be drastically improved. And kind of, I'm kind of hoping that they do. Because this game is, like, really good, and it'd be an absolute crying shame. 
There we go. If they don't fix the performance a bit better. Micah bounces a little. Sable! Yes! Whatever you did there, it seems to be working. Keep at it. It's fair. I was actually really wondering how I was going to get back. This really simplifies things tremendously. More butterfly. I don't see any other convenient butterfly. Nope, this is wrong. Okay, there we go. But yeah, so I might I might be alternating this with a couple of series for at least a little while. Until they've either patched it or I'm done. Uh, and also just for my own sanity. Like, it's one of those where I desperately want to finish more games. But one of the problems is the indie, the indie games industry has accelerated uh, dramatically. Uh, and so you might notice that I'm doing like a tremendous amount of one-offs lately. Uh, sometimes two a day. And... Um, I'm fine with it, kind of going back to the, my thing at the very beginning of the video, talking about like being kind of glad to boycott certain developers because it means I don't have to work as hard. Uh, I think I stand by that. I can get to the other side. I should check that. Uh, hmm, no. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a control room here. Oops. I'm pushing it. I think I'm going to make it. It'll be fine. Yeah, there's so many games that I want to actually like play and finish in so very little time. I mean, it's almost 2 a.m. and I'm just recording this episode now to go out in a couple hours. Uh, and then I'll go to bed and pick it up from there. And it's like, it's not so bad. It's just one of those where I really, truly cannot finish all of these. And I have to like figure out how to reconcile that. And it's rough. Because, yeah, how do I reconcile that? And I, I think the easiest answer is truly... What I do series on, I, I have to finish. Uh, I mean, I don't have to finish it, but... The, the smart thing for me to do would always be to finish what I start. But start very little. Sable, how can I ever thank you? No more dangerous climbs. Tell Mikey he, can't, he can thank me by avoiding dangerous climbs. It isn't lost on me that I could have easily been met with the corpse. Oh, don't worry about that. I will definitely be avoiding all solo climbs for a little while. And the dangerous ones forever. I've learned my lesson. He reaches into his pocket. But I do want to give you something else. He hands me a climbing badge and I take it gratefully. I'm going to go back to Five Bells Camp. Should be fine. Walking's a little easier than climbing right now. You're my savior, Sable. If you ever decide to become a climber, you got my endorsement. Take care, all right? I tell him I will and say a fond goodbye. Huh. I didn't realize... I didn't realize there was a climber faction. It's kind of cool. I think my bike is over here. Yeah, there it is. It's a pretty boat. Look at it go. Okay, so unfortunately, oh right, that was one thing that I did want to did want to do. Uh, is that the? I think that's the caravan location. I don't know how much I care. I think I'll swing by and talk to them just because we're here. But one thing I really do want to look look up, and actually look up, is where the cartographers probably are. Maybe. I guess the other problem is that I need money to even be able to afford the map, so maybe it's not that important. It also does help that there's not a whole lot going on in most of these locations, so I can pretty freely get to them. Okay. Are they still here? Yep. And he's returned. I really like that boat. Glider, I wish I was stolen my gliding. Being grown up is terrible. Okay, no, that's Habat. We wanted Bahir. Bahir looks ready to hug me. Thanks so much. I don't know what you said to him, but he said he's given up solo climbs unless they're very safe. I told Bashir I didn't do much to, uh, I didn't say much to dissuade Micah. Bit of slippery moss did the work for me. He laughs and thanks me again. Really happy to have him home. Thank you. Wish Bashir and Micah the best and go on my way. Can't thank you enough for your help there. Cool. Not really a whole lot, but it was nice to drop by and say hi before we left. Getting some kind of Borderlands vibes from these bits of the soundtrack. Oh, that's a cool looking thing, whatever's over there. 
Yeah, I'm just gonna wander. I'll come back and do side quests when I feel like it. And when I figure out how to get a pop pomegranate. What the hell is that? It's probably just, yeah, it's just a weird plant. I just saw uh, what looked like chums just kind of sticking out of the sand. It's like, what? But they looked really thin and possibly dead. Yeah, there's something over here. We'll say we're getting pretty close to what I would consider the end of this episode. I think that's fine. Oh gosh, yeah, actually we've gone well past. There it is. Let's go say hi to that rune. We'll probably just poke our heads in and then, I don't know, pick this up in a day or two? We will see. But I, I think I might want to snag a map. Uh, just so I can specifically find out where some of the POIs are. The Atomic Heart, Heartbreak in the City. Oh. Slot for a key card in the terminal. Perhaps this would unlock the door. Okay, so this is the power that's applying to the, the city. So I'm all the way up here at the Atomic Heart. Well, that's cool. That's, um... That's a little bit more tremendous than I was expecting. When I heard Atomic Heart, I thought it was like maybe they had a generator in the city or something and they just called it that. No, they've got a giant stinking, like, power generator thing in in the city. Or, not in the city, outside of the city, and it is huge. I don't know. I think that's going to be the thing for me. I don't necessarily know if I care to do every side quest in this. I'll, I'll do a number of them and maybe look up what the badges do. Uh, but I want to see the set pieces. Like... <laughs> Frankly, to some degree, oh, you know what I could do is just give myself infinite money. Um, but it might not be a bad idea for me to just, like, spend an episode just driving around, going by every point of interest, and just interacting with them. All right, there, there's a balloon. Because I think that would actually have a lot of interesting potential, just to kind of see. Because I don't care about the overarching plot necessarily the game has not hooked me there I don't even know if there is one I, I think it's just collect what three to five badges and then you're done if you want to be and then maybe you get a special ending based on like what Sable decides she wants to be in life I like that I, I still love that as a, a free form uh, kind of storytelling element of just like yeah you don't need to be well, I mean, there's no plot, but also, the ending is whenever you want it. Man, I would love that in more games. Alright, anyway, this is starting to go actually too long, so I will see you guys in the next episode of Sable. I'm gonna go get up there and get me a map. But for now, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.